the election was a disaster for Democrats. And the giveaway actually was New Jersey, not Virginia. The fact that an incumbent Democratic governor who was well ahead in the polls, both sides expected him to win the Republicans by three or four, the Democrats by up to 10. The fact that at least for a while, uh, he was tied with his Republican opponent tells you all you need to know. When combined with Virginia, which went uh, Republican for the first time in 10 years, it tells you that something's changed. And what's changed is President Biden, who won Virginia by 10 points and New Jersey by 16 points, has become unpopular. And the Democrats controlling the House and Senate, barely, have also become unpopular because they haven't produced. Youngkin has no public record. He has never run for public office. He has never served in public office. It's really tough to attack somebody when they have no public record. That's why McCullough spent so much time associating him with Trump. Whereas Youngkin had four years of McCullough's governorship. He was governor from 2014 to 2018. And there are always plenty of things to attack in any governor's record when he's serving four years and making controversial decisions daily. Republicans depend on the white vote, to be very blunt about it. They need a large percentage of the white vote. They need an overwhelming percentage of the non-college working class white vote. And so how do they get it? Well, some consumer issues help, but mainly it's a matter of saying, I'm looking out for you, not those other people. They're not gonna take over, you're in charge. That's the subliminal message that comes from any of these racial issues, not just in Virginia, it's national. And tragically, it still works. And then Youngkin went after parents as a group. Now, you can consider this legitimate or you can consider it illegitimate. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the issues he used because I think they were racially tinged. But he went after Democrats running the schools, liberals running the schools, socialists running the schools because they were abandoning American principles and they were teaching kids that all white people are racist. We don't even teach critical race theory in Virginia. Okay, a lot of this was made up, but boy, did it work. In the Trump era, you don't need the facts. You just need the emotion. And he was able to gin up that emotion. And that is what also produced a very large Republican turnout. Donald Trump's voter base was always going to stay with Donald Trump. And when he directs them to a Republican nominee, they will show up. In the case of Virginia, uh, even though Glenn Youngkin never appeared with Trump and didn't want to appear with Trump, well, Trump endorsed him either seven or eight times, including on election eve, but it had relatively little effect on everybody else except for Republicans. It helped to gin up a very big Republican turnout, which made the difference. I think Youngkin has shown the way for at least some Republicans in 2022. If you're careful about what you say and you're relatively friendly to Trump and you make sure you send emissaries to him a lot, he may not attack you. And yet, you can keep him at arm's length, far enough away so he isn't in the picture. And therefore, voters, other than the Trump voters, will not consider Trump, because he's not president anymore. This was a late-breaking campaign. Uh, McAuliffe was, in essence, the incumbent in the race. And he left office as a relatively popular governor. I mean, he wasn't wildly popular, but he was over 50%. I count that as popular in this era. And he had a record of accomplishments that he started talking about. It happened gradually. It wasn't as though Youngkin popped up 10 points in a week. Youngkin started in the 30s. He moved up a half a point, a point, a half a point, a point by election day, moved up to what it's turned out to be, which is 51%. He's won by about 2%. And the turnout in Virginia was massive. It was huge. It was a record for a non-presidential election. And it was fueled almost entirely by Republicans. Uh, they were as excited as they could be, in part because they'd lost for 10 years and they finally had a chance to win. And they weren't gonna miss that opportunity. But also because Democrats were disillusioned with Biden, disillusioned with the Democrats on Capitol Hill, and didn't see a reason to vote. 
But interestingly, the Republicans more than made up the difference. You know, this was, it was a close race. It was two points. And yet Democrats in Virginia have a substantial majority. They should win easily. Uh, and you have to try to lose as a Democrat. And the Democrats did a great job of trying and they lost. The message it sends to Democrats nationwide is, you had better get your act together and fast. You've got one year to change public perceptions. You've got one year to produce so the Democrats will think they have a stake in going to the polls and voting. You have one year to improve President Biden's ratings. He has to be at 50 or above if you're going to do well or have any chance of holding either the House or the Senate at the national level. One year, one year. You've wasted nine months public feuding, parading in front of the TV cameras so that everybody gets their TV time. But the image that comes across is Democrats are divided. Democrats are incoherent. Democrats can't get anything done. It's a five alarm fire for Democrats and they'd better pay attention if they don't want to get it incinerated next year in the big midterm election.